This is Adel Gasly. I'm going to present to you part three of the chapter about magnetic circuits. In this part, I will present and discuss the problem of hysteresis loops and their effect. Consider the following coil called assembly, where the excitation current is sinusoidal. Assume that at time zero, the core is initially unmagnetized, so the starting point is the origin point zero. If the magnetic flux intensity H is now increased by slowly increasing the current I, the flux density will change according to the curve 0A. The point A corresponds to a particular value of the magnetic flux intensity H1 corresponding to the maximum current value I1. If the magnetic flux intensity is now slowly decreased, the BH curve will follow a different path such as A, B, C. When H is made zero, the core has retained a flux density BR known as the residual flux density. If H is now reversed by reversing the current I, the flux in the core will decrease and for a particular value of H, such as minus HC, the residual flux will be removed. This value of the magnetic field minus HC is known as the coercivity or coercive force of the magnetic core. For current minus I1, the flux density will correspond to point E. If H is now decreased to zero and then increased to the value H1, the BH curve will follow the path E, F, G, A prime. Notice that the loop does not close. Now, if H is varied for another cycle, the final operating point will be A double prime. Again, notice that the loop does not close. However, the operating points A prime and A double prime are closer together than points A and A prime. After a few cycles of magnetization, this loop almost closes and it is called the hysteresis loop. The loop shows that the relationship between B and H is nonlinear and multivalued. Throughout the whole cycle of magnetization, the flux density lags behind the magnetic intensity. This lagging phenomenon in the magnetic core is called hysteresis, which is a Greek name meaning deficiency or state of being behind or late. For more explanation about the physics behind the hysteresis, I do recommend that you watch this movie on YouTube. This link is also available below in the description of this movie. Smaller hysteresis loops are obtained by decreasing the amplitude of variation of the magnetic flux intensity, as shown in this figure. The locus of the tip of the hysteresis loops, shown in dashed lines here, is called the magnetization curve. For some magnetic cores, the hysteresis loop is very narrow and usually the hysteresis effect is neglected for such cores. And then the BH characteristic is represented by just the magnetization curve. The hysteresis loops are obtained by slowly varying the current I of the coil over a cycle. When the current is varied through one cycle, during some interval of time, energy flows from the source to the coil core assembly. And during some other interval of time, energy returns back to the source. However, the energy flowing in is greater than the energy that is returning back to the source. Therefore, during one cycle variation of the current, hence the flux intensity, there is a net energy flow from the source to the coil core assembly. So we can say that there is an energy loss that goes to hit the core. This loss of power in the core, which is due to the hysteresis effect, is called hysteresis loss. It will be shown later 
that the size of this hysteresis loop is proportional to the hysteresis loss. Let us assume that the coil has no resistance and the flux in the core is fine. Then the voltage E across the coil can be obtained according to Faraday's laws as E equal the number of turns multiplied by the variation of the flux over the time, d phi by dt. Now the energy transfer during an interval of time t1 to t2 is calculated as the integral of the instantaneous power p over the same interval t1 and t2. The instantaneous power is actually the product of the source voltage E and the current I. Considering the relation between the source voltage and the flux, which is presented above, we can obtain this expression. Finally, the energy transfer can be expressed as the integral of the MMF and I over the flux variation between phi1 and phi2, which correspond to time t1 and t2 respectively. Now, considering that the flux is the product of the flux density B and the core cross-section area, and considering that, according to Ampere's law, the current is HL divided by N, we can then rewrite the energy transfer expression as shown here. Considering that the core length L multiplied by cross-section area A is actually the volume of the core, we can obtain this equation. The integral term in this equation represent the hatched area of the hysteresis loop. The total energy transfer over one cycle of variation is actually the product of the volume of the core by the area of the BH curve, which is denoted WH. So from the previous in equation of the energy transfer, we can write that the area of the hysteresis loop is equal to the energy density in the volume. Now the power loss in the core due to the hysteresis effect can be calculated as the ratio of the energy transfer over the current cycle time or period T. Now replacing the energy transfer by its expression as a function of the volume of the core and the area of the hysteresis loop and taking the frequency of current variation F instead of the period T, we can rewrite this expression of the hysteresis power loss as shown here. Note that it is difficult to evaluate the area of the hysteresis loop because the pH characteristic is nonlinear and multivalued and there is no simple mathematical expression that can describe this loop. However, Charles Steinmetz of the General Electric Company, who performed a large number of experiments, found that the magnetic material used in most of electrical machines could be approximated by a relation of the hysteresis area, which is shown here. So the approximate area of the BH loop is equal K multiplied by B max to the power N, where B max is the maximum flux density and varies in the range of 1.5 to 2.5, and K is a constant. Both N and K can be empirically determined. Now using this approximate equation, we can rewrite the power loss equation as kh multiplied by b max power n multiplied by the frequency of the current. Here kh is a constant whose value depends on the ferromagnetic material and the volume of the core. Notice that the higher the frequency of variation of the current, the higher is the hysteresis loss. Which means that for some electrical machines operating at high frequency of the current, we shall expect that the hysteresis loss cannot be neglected. This is the end of this part. Thank you for watching.